Welcome to Maryland Medicine Frontline News, highlighting faculty, staff, and students who are fighting COVID-19 on the front lines of research and clinical care. Coming up, is it safe to reopen schools in the fall? But first, a check on where we stand. After months of fighting the coronavirus in Maryland, there is cautious optimism and continued concern. We're going through a mountain range, so there will be highs and lows, and we should expect that going into the next few months until there's a vaccine. Uh, so there will be surges of patients and then there will be lulls. And right now our state is in a valley and that's a good thing. But scientists are still learning how tenacious and deceptive the coronavirus can be. There is so much asymptomatic disease out there. We think it's 20 to 40% of people who are infected don't even develop symptoms. And then there are a lot, a lot of people who have pre-symptomatic disease, which means that they are infected and can transmit the infection to other people, but still don't have symptoms and they develop them days later and still have that opportunity to infect people. The good news is the overall infection rate is holding steady, along with hospitalizations and deaths. 20 and 30 year olds are really what we see right now as driving continued transmissions this summer. And that's really where we want to continue to pay our attention. So before it was outbreaks in nursing homes and other settings, now we're turning our attention to the young adults. And then we need to worry about the fall. And in the fall, it starts to get colder. We move inside, schools open up. We want to try and get back to some normalcy in the fall. But there will, this will be a different fall than what we've ever been used to living through. We need to expect differences in our work environments, differences in our educational environments, so that we can continue to keep this virus transmitted less. So therefore we don't have this next peak and surge into the fall. Dr. Chen and Dr. Marcosi are on the task force advising Governor Hogan on how to keep the infection rate low and the testing rates high. So the guidelines that that task force uh, were, uh, developed was able to be transmitted directly to our incident command system that really involve UMB, School of Medicine, the medical center, and the medical system under one integrated enterprise. So that this discussions, decisions were made corporately and collectively and collaboratively. For example, the Institute of Genome Sciences came together with the Department of Pathology and developed a a rather high throughput testing platform for COVID-19. And with working with the, the governor and his task force, we've been able to provide that type of testing service basically across the state. The impact of climate on the pandemic is still unclear. It's now apparent though that summer weather is not slowing the spread of the disease. Temperature by itself, you know, isn't slowing the virus down. Um, First of all, there's many different factors that go into transmission. This is one of them. But if our hypothesis is correct, we're predicting um, that there would be high, higher risk during the winter time, uh, specifically when the temperatures again change and when we see other seasonal viruses causing uh, problems as well. In the laboratory, basic scientists continue vital research to expand our understanding of the coronavirus while developing new vaccine candidates and therapies. One of the really important parts about responding to this new coronavirus is all of the previous knowledge we have against the other two highly pathogenic coronaviruses, SARS coronavirus 1 and MERS coronavirus. And so for the past 11 years that I've been here at University of Maryland, we've been developing in vitro assays and mouse models for studying both of these other viruses. And the ability to now know how to work with the virus and how to study it in the previous coronaviruses has enabled us to really fast track our knowledge for this new virus. Some school systems are planning to reopen in the fall, but will that lead to more infections? Children to date have not been the drivers, if you will, we call it like the drivers of the epidemic. If you look at influenza, which is our kind of go-to model for respiratory viral epidemiology, children are the drivers. Every year when influenza comes to our communities, and it gets into families and gets into schools and daycares, it's high attack rate in children. Children pass to other children. Those children bring it home to their family members. That's where the epidemic has its like wheels churning. 
That has not been the case for SARS-CoV-2. At the beginning, we thought it would be because of flu and other things that are like flu. That has not been the case. Dr. Campbell is a member of the American Academy of Pediatrics, which supports the reopening of schools with adequate safety protocols and the agreement of local experts and government leaders. Schools are such an integral part of the development of children that we need to think about all of the other risks of not physically being in a school space. Yes, we need to think about infectious risk to the kids, but we also need to think about are they getting the education that they need if it's not done physically in a school? Are they as safe? If they don't have multiple eyes on them, those are their care providers, their teachers, the other people in the school, and their parents and community members, are they as safe from thing, things like physical, sexual, mental, other abuses? Um, are they getting appropriate nutrition? You can stay up to date by visiting the coronavirus update page on the School of Medicine website. Until next week, I'm Larry Roberts for the University of Maryland School of Medicine. The climate on the pandemic is still unclear. It's now apparent, though, that summer weather is not slowing the spread of the disease.